Okay, this is a Schebler D, and this particular one is a D152. It's off of the Cushman four horse binder engine. So, what we've done is, what I've done is, I've taken it apart and sandblasted it, got it all cleaned up, actually used beads, bead blasted it, got it all cleaned up, and uh, here's the uh, throttle body, a throttle plate in here. This is the throttle body section, I guess you would call it, of the carburetor. And uh, this is pretty early technology. We'll see how this thing works. It's pretty crude, actually. This is a dip tube, I'll show you later. Dips down into the intake, and it's actually soldered here. <clears throat> and I've read uh, a few things on the web where this was maybe put in afterwards, or uh, this was kind of an afterthought on Schebler's part. Uh, don't know for sure. Uh, I'll show you kind of what I, my idea of uh, this tube is for here in a little bit. And I've made a few gaskets for it. Here's a bowl gasket. Here's the uh, other uh, gaskets for the housings on it. Um, I decided to use an O-ring inside the throat and then make a uh, little O-ring protector for it here. Um, I'll show you how all that goes together here uh, in a second. Had to make this little locking knob here. It was missing on my carburetor. So, uh, let's get that together. Here's the little intake horn. And there is a baffle that goes in here. And it didn't have any leather on it or any kind of seal, so I put a new piece of leather on there. Just used uh, standard uh, cowhide to make the uh, to make the damper seal. Here's the main body all cleaned up. I think it says D05 or something on there. Yours may have a similar marking on it if, if you're following along with the rebuild here. Pretty good sized bowl. I've had the main jet out. You pull this, uh, pull this main needle out then you can pull the main jet out. You see it down in there in the, in the in a, a normal modern carburetor that would be called a Venturi but this really don't have a restriction in there uh, a Venturi restriction like we're used to on modern carburetors then here's where the the float needle seals that's just a seat that's built in I might be able to drive that out I don't know I didn't try it it looks pretty good gonna use it and I'm gonna ahead and put the fuel inlet nipple on here and tighten it down and uh, this is just a bowl drain when you get done running it for uh, the season I suppose you open this up and drain the bowl and uh, keep it from gumming up on you this is the float arm and I had to repair it this part was broken off this part here was uh, broken off and I ended up having to put it back on and solder it so I clean it up real well so I can get solder around the whole perimeter here and also build up some solder here in the broken area and uh, we're going to hope this holds. I could make this piece new but it would take you know a little bit of effort to do that and, I, and this seems to be pretty strong. I used a silver bearing solder and uh, this seems to be fairly strong so we're going to try it. Here's a new float I got from uh, Otto and um, looks pretty good. Uh, the old floats uh, that were in it uh, were disintegrated. Uh, there was a couple of them. Somebody had tried to repair one of them and uh, the other one was probably the original. And these floats are available from Otto. And uh, the guy's name is Dave. He's real nice to deal with. And uh, he takes PayPal and ships immediately. And here is the top. Um, the Shebler, Indianapolis, Indiana, and uh, this is the top of the carburetor bowl. This is a tickler. This actually pushes down on the uh, float and opens the needle and lets fuel run in to prime it. And we'll get to that here after a bit. So I'm going to begin the uh, reassembly with the air horn here. I need a spring. Now this spring is uh, not, of course, the original. The original was long gone. 
This one seems to work fine. I'm going to use it, try it, see how it works. Here's the damper. And to uh, start with, you stick the damper and pop it down in the hole. Then you take the, uh, the screw here. It goes in the hole like this, goes through the damper. I've got to put a spring on it. Put my spring on there. Then I can get that lined up in there, stick it through, screw this down. Now I'm just guessing at the preliminary setting here. I'll tighten that down. And now the damper is in place in there. And as air comes through, it opens, pops open that damper. Now, there is also a port right here, a small port that during slow speed operation and no load operation it draws its air through this port right here I don't know if we can see it there or not but right here with my screwdriver sticking through that's a small port and then during times of uh, high power uh, it'll actually suck open this valve and gulp uh, more air so that's that assembly I went over and found a tool I haven't used for many, many years. It's a screw starter. What you do is you, uh, you set it here, spring loaded, stick your screw in there, push on it, and that holds your screw. We used, I got this tool 40 years ago when I first started in the auto repair business. And I used this for years to hold the point screws while I changed ignition points in distributors. That would hold a screw for you while you got it down there and started it. Lifesaver. Haven't used it for years. We'll see if it works here. So I've got it started. Got the pin started through the pivot. So you want to get the threads started here. And uh, these threads here, at least on my carburetor, are quarter 32 threads. I had to chase those threads because they were pretty rough. And uh, there's the pivot in place. So now my next trick is to be going to be to get the float moved around in there and up against the pivot arm so I can get the screw started in it. That's going to be a trick. Before I do that, before I do that, let me show you how the, uh, the needle goes in. This is the pivot. The needle drops right down into place here, right in there, and that is allowed to pivot in there rotate, move around, and there's a small nut like this that screws onto the top and retains the needle into that assembly like that. So hoping that my glue is set, I'm going to take that screw out. I'm going to push on that nut and see if it's set. Yeah, it seems to be not moving. I used some kicker on it, so it set the glue pretty quickly. So there's a screw. There goes the float into place. Let's get the arm in here. It goes in there. Well, actually, it's going to come in from this way. The easiest. Like so. There it goes. And now I've got to get the pivot. There's a screw on this side I've already got put in there. This goes through here and goes through the pivot arm. And this is actually the pivot pin. So I'll get that stuck in there. One thing I may note when I got the uh, float this screw was just loose in there 
I ended up putting some super glue on it and I'm waiting on it to dry now. And uh, because when you put this down in the bowl, then you got to put the screw in there. Well, there's no way to reach underneath there and hold the nut. So that nut is going to have to stay in position with glue. And then we hope if we ever have to take this apart, that that nut doesn't spin in there because there will be no way of getting it apart if that nut spins. Really don't like that design, uh, but it's what we have to deal with. Now comes the tricky part. Three things have to come together in sequence at the same time here. I've got to get the float down in the bowl. Then I've got to get the float arm uh, in it into its position. Then I have to put the screw into the float through the float arm into the float. Then I have to put the pin through the float arm. Then I have to put the uh, the needle. Here's the needle. Get you a look at it. That's all it amounts to. Here's the other end of it. All that has to come together at the same time. I haven't rehearsed this, so uh, we're going to do this together. Okay, I didn't want to bore you with that, but I'll tell you, I've had to really get this thing in all kinds of positions and get my screw in there through the hole in the pivot arm and then worked it down into the into the float and I finally got it. Uh, and the only thing I think I'm going to do is just make the distance equal between the float and the housing in here and move it over just a little bit there and get it centered up in there and uh, tighten the screw up. So the main objective is to get the float square in the bowl to where it will pivot easily. I think that's going to be pretty close. Get that tight. Snug but not too tight. Let's drop the needle in. I believe it went in the hole, I'm not sure. Let me take a look here. I'm not sure. Let me pull this float up. Hold it up. I'm going to drop that needle in. Let that float down just a little bit. Make sure I get the needle down into the seat. I believe it is. Let's put the nut on it. Got to work down in a recess to do this too. Got a little socket over here that I'm going to try to guide it in with. Looks like I'm going to have to do it by hand. There it goes. Oops. started here. It's windy outside today. You hear my door creaking probably in the background. Sorry about that. Okay, there are the nuts on it. I'm just going to hand tighten it about like that. So, there it is. See how freely it operates now. It does operate. I can blow through it there, turn it upside down, can't blow through it, so I guess that's a starting point. Now there's critical dimensions when you put this carb together, it goes just like that. There's critical dimensions between the float bowl gasket here and the Venturi seal area in here. See if I can get this to where you can see that in there. 
that's about 175 thousandths gap in there when this is setting down on its gasket so I figured out I can put an o-ring in here that's what the o-ring was for I showed you earlier and uh, that'll seal up so here's the o-ring and I found one that just fits in that recess real nicely and when we put the carburetor back together here you see the o-ring in there you know, where you might be able to see it and I was afraid that o-ring might get sucked out with vacuum so there it is there you can see it so I made a little spacer I wanted it just a little bit tighter a little more pressure on the o-ring I wanted the o-ring not to be able to be pulled out so I machined up a spacer like this it's got a little shoulder on it so I put it in there first stick it in there and stick the o-ring in around it and we end up with the o-ring captured by that spacer so when I get it all together there's no way this o-ring can get sucked out of position by the by the engine vacuum so we'll get our bowl gasket here it fits this way it fits just inside a little ridge here right here on the outside fits that pretty nice line up the holes get it held in position there and let's set the bowl down over the top of it it goes just like this line the holes up I'm going to use a short bolt here to line the holes up with there we go that looks good I'll leave that short bolt in there for now so our gaskets in place our o-rings in place and the o-ring shield is in place so now put that bolt back in there so I can lay this assembly now and not lose the gasket now let's find a gasket put it over here get it ready to go in it's all set get a good hold of this in position run our tube down the venturi this little pickup tube it goes down into the venturi there get our gaskets all lined up here and again one two three four things have to come together in unison here close get my gaskets lined up there we are takes a long bolt down through the gasket through the bowl lid and into the bowl make sure our upper bowl gasket is in position and it is and let's tighten this down Is that pickup tube down here in the in the venturi area and I think I think it goes down a little closer but I'm gonna leave it right there for now I'll try to run the engine like that 
I think what you do, and I don't have any documentation on this engine, but I think what you do is you hold this button down. That pushes the float down, opens the float, allows more fuel to come in and overflow through the main jet into the intake area here. And then this little tube, if there's enough gasoline gathers in there, there's this little tube comes in and it's plumbed in above the throttle valve. So when the throttle is closed, this is sucking like crazy on this tube here, and it'll suck a charge of fuel up in here. I think that's—I think that helps prime the engine the way it looks. So uh, that's about it, other than putting this cap on that covers the uh, needle, and I've used another O-ring in there. It had a paper gasket in it when I took it apart. We're modernizing a little bit here. Dead on there. And we'll get the air intake horn put on it. And that's where our short bolts come in. Now on this engine, the intake horn points up like that. And there was a filter went on here. So uh, it could go either way. I could put it like that. Which I may end up changing it, but I'm going to put it on like it came off. Get my gasket. Short bolts. These are 5 16 18s. These have screw heads. They didn't have any lock washers. Pretty much, there it is. So, uh, next thing to do is to see if uh, I'm going to introduce fuel from the tank, see if it comes in and the float comes up and stops the fuel at a certain level, and we should be good to go. Shebler, Model D. There was a bunch of them made. A lot of marine engines use these. I think all the Cushman uh, binder engines used them. Some automobiles used them. They're pretty crude. But uh, they work. So we'll see how this one works. Thanks for watching. Okay, back with you one more time here. <clears throat> I decided after thinking this thing over, I took it apart and I bent this tube to where it just lays right at the bottom of the opening here and there's a saw cut here anyway and I think that is to allow the um, the fuel to run out if it accumulates in there I think these carburetors were leakers uh, as far as the needle and seat the needle and seats pretty crude and this one somebody's beat it up here you know tapping on it trying to get the needle to seal I would imagine I know I've tapped on them before, not quite this hard, but uh, I've tapped on them before, you know, try to get the needle either loosened or, or to seat better. So I went ahead and put this tube clear down at the bottom, like that, and then when it's to get the intake pipe back on it, and it's mounted on the engine, I think a guy can take his thumb, cover that slit there where the fuel would drain out, cover the slit, crank the engine over after you tickle it with the tickler here and run some fuel in there and draw a charge a priming charge into the intake I think that may be part of the starting process so uh, we'll see we'll see what happens with it